All right, in this video, we're going to talk about creating some more complex sequences of animations using the Framer Motion Animation Library and React. In an animation sequence is something like I have here with this blue box, where it translates, it rotates, it scales, it changes its border radius. Basically, you can do whatever you want. It's just a sequence of animations one after the other. And we can create these animations using the useAnimate hook and the animate function from Framer Motion. So let's dive into our code now and see how it works. All right, so let's dive into our component here, which I'm calling sequence. This is a very simple component. We're just returning a single motion div. And here I've got some styles on that div with a width and a height of 100 pixels and a background color of blue. It's pretty simple. Now, in order to animate this box, we're using the useAnimate hook from Framer Motion. Because the thing about useAnimate is that when we call it, it provides us both the animate function as well as a scope for that animate function. So the animate function in Framer Motion is a function that allows us to write our animations in an imperative style. And by defining a scope for that particular animate function, we can contain that animation to only those elements in the scope. Now scope is a ref, and in this case, we're assigning React's ref prop to be the scope. So in this particular case, the scope is actually referring to the box that we're animating. However, we could have other elements inside of this div, like for example, some p tags or whatever. And in that case, we would say that those p tags would be contained in the scope of that outer motion div. Now we're using use effect from React as well. And because we've passed in an empty dependency array for the second argument, that means that whatever is inside of this use effect is just going to run once when the component mounts. And what we're doing inside of the use effect is calling that animate function. And here's the thing about creating sequences. When we call animate, if we want to create a sequence of animations, we're going to pass in an array. So here we have sequence, which is this, and it refers to this array. And you can see inside of this array that we have other arrays, and each of these arrays is what's considered an animation definition. So here we have three of them. These are three steps in our animation sequence. Each of these animation definition arrays first takes the element that we want to animate. So in this case, it's actually this div that has the scope ref on it, and we can access that by doing scope.current. And you can see that for each of these arrays, we're accessing scope.current for each of them. Now, the second thing that goes into these arrays is the target object. This is where we define the properties and the values that we want to animate to. So in the first step of our sequence, we're animating 200 pixels along the x-axis. And this is going to last for a duration of one second. And this object with the duration in it, this is called the transition object. This is the third thing that you're going to put into these arrays. So this first step is a pretty simple one. Actually, let's comment out the second two and just take a look at that very first step so we can kind of isolate it. And you see that translation. And then let's just bring in the second step. Here for the target object, we're now going to move in the opposite direction, negative 20 pixels on the x-axis. But here we're also going to scale this box up twice its size, and we're going to do a little rotation animation, 360 degrees. And this one, in the transition object, this one's going to last for one second as well. So now let's see those two steps of the sequence. So here's step one and step two. And finally, let's bring in our third step. In this one, we're going to scale down to half the size, and we're going to turn it into a circle. And so we're doing border radius of 50%, and this one is also lasting for a duration of one second. And the whole thing together looks like this. All right, so here's a completely brand new example. And this one is going to teach us a little bit more about the idea of scope, as well as show us how we can use motion value animation definitions in our sequence. So first, let's do a little demo of this animation sequence. So the main difference compared to what we did before is that now we're animating two different elements. And those are these two motion divs, which are enclosed in an outer wrapping div, which now is the scope ref. 
So whereas before we animated the scope ref element directly, now we're animating the elements that are child elements of that outer scope. And you can see those elements here inside of the sequence array. Those are being targeted now with box one and box two IDs, which I've placed on the child motion divs. And so in this case, let me show you what would happen if I moved the second motion div outside of the scope. So now notice that the red box no longer animates like it did before. But put it back inside the scope. And now we've got our animation back. So what is the benefit of using this scoping? Well, in this case, I've targeted each of the elements separately with their own ID. But for example, let's say that I had a class name that was the same for each of these elements. I could pass the class name in as a selector. And if my component was really large and complex, I might have other divs throughout the component that also use that class name that I don't want to be animated. So with the scoping, we can prevent conflicts and kind of contain the animations to only certain elements on the page. So it helps with making things more manageable. So there's another special thing about this particular component, and you can see that here in the third animation definition in the sequence. And notice here that we're using this progress thing. And this progress, this is a motion value. So motion values in Framer Motion allow us to tap into all those intermediate or interpolated values that are going on when an element is animating. And if we have access to those, we can do various things like different kind of processing. We can chain them into some of the other hooks that Framer Motion offers, like use spring, use velocity, use transform, and so on. And here we're getting access to that motion value by way of Framer Motion's use motion value hook. Now, we're initializing it to a value of 100. And here in our sequence, we're animating it to a value of 200. And the thing that's being animated is the width of the first box. You see width is assigned to progress. And if we play the animation, we can see it as the third step of the animation right here. So this is a way to use motion value animation definitions inside of the sequence array. Now, in this use effect, we're not returning any cleanup function. And according to the docs, when you use the use animate hook, any animation that you run, it gets an automatic cleanup when the component is unmounted. So that's another nice feature of using the use animate hook. Now, there's a whole lot more ways that we can control our sequences with different operators and keywords and such. And that's all part of my Framer Motion course, which I'll leave a link to below. So make sure to check that out. But until next time, drop a like and thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning how to bring your web pages to life with cool animations, GSAP, and scrolly telling techniques, check out my course, Scrolly Telling 101. Since I launched the course, the response has been amazing, with students commenting on the wealth of web dev tips and tricks included in the lessons. I'm going to leave a link down below for you, and you can start by checking out some of the free preview videos there. I think you're going to love it.